How y'all doing today? Hopefully you're having a wonderful day, night, time zone, whatever it is for you. Welcome back to Shin Mirai. In the previous video, we worked on this mob farm right here, and we got a bunch of loot going on from the mob farm there. However, it still looks, uh, well, pretty ugly down here. So today, we're gonna beautify it up very nicely. We're also gonna do some uh, fancy stuff with this uh, gunpowder and some uh, paper, turning it into automatic rockets. Using the one, the only, the Auto Crafter. But before we begin anything, we need some sugar cane. And I apologize for the following. Yeah, here we go. In the lands of blocks and pixel dreams, where river flows and sunlight gleams, there's a humble plant that stands so tall, swaying gently by the water's call. Sugar cane. In the sun's so we glow, growing strong by the river's flow. From the banks it rises, reaching for the light, for the pixelated world appear to lie. In the fields are green, it finds its home, and every biome it freely roams. A simple joy in a blocky land, a testament to nature's hand. So let's raise our pickaxes high, to the shuriken that touches the sky. In Minecraft's world, forever will reign, the humble yet mighty sugarcane. So, we can agree to uh, never talk about that again, right? Right? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, huh. Yeah, let's move on. But now we actually do have quite a bit of the sugar gain itself, which will be very, very nice for those automatic rockets. So now we just need to pipe them from up over there, down over here where the gunpowder is, and do some fancy autocrafter magic to then uh, poop out uh, the fluffy firework rockets. Why are they fluffy? Because... Because they are? I don't know. Alright, let's figure this out together, shall we? So we need to craft the rockets. We only want flight duration 1, as uh, more is not going to be good. And so we can lock all the rest of those. Now we need to put in both the gunpowder and the paper. And we need to find a way to trigger this once it gets enough paper and gunpowder to craft a rocket. The best way I think to do that is going to be take the signal from the hoppers themselves. So if we have those running into a block, then some redstone back here, and another block back here, a repeater sensing those, to then power the crafter and set these on a little bit of a clock. So if there is extra, they'll continue to craft until there's not enough, like a so. Now if we have that just running like this, it's just gonna keep crafting until uh, there's nothing at all in these. And then now the hoppers are out, and the crafter stops. Which is really nice, however there is a bit of a flaw with this design particularly. If we have a lot more of one resource than the other, for example, if we have a bunch of paper but no more gunpowder, it will still then craft. As you can see, the paper is staying filled, but the gunpowder is, well, not. It is going down pretty quickly, and eventually it's going to be all the way down to the ground. And when that happens, we're going to run into a situation like this, which is not what we want at all. If we have both paper in there, when gunpowder eventually does come into the system, it's going to get clogged. It's a clogged crafter! So we need to find a way to make it so only when both of them have a signal will it then go through. Alright, I have something that is now working here. It is a bit complicated, but it is kind of compact, so that's nice at least. It's using lots and lots of comparators, as you can see. These comparators are comparing these hoppers, which then are going into these comparators that are comparing those, and those are compared to compare comparator 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 rockets. Hopefully that makes sense. But in all serious, all that really matters is that it works, right? So we'll only craft when both sides have at least one item in it. Which is very nice. Let's uh, build this actually up into it and have the sugar cane flow over now. So now if we stand here for just a brief moment, we should see a sugar cane falling right on top of our heads here in just a second. There it goes. Alright, so we got our auto crafter here, the gunpowder on this side right there, the sugar cane falling down here. Now we need to take that sugar cane and turn it into paper automatically from the auto crafter as well, before putting it into this crafter to make the rockets. And I think to do that, we simply have something like this, where we can then pick up the sugar cane falling from above, right here. It should fall down right into the auto crafter. 
We only need the first three slots here. However, we don't want it to craft sugar. So we want to make sure it only will craft once all three of those have something in it. And to do that, we need a little more comparator magic here. And there we go. So now uh, this comparator is sensing this crafter and that one's restricting it to only craft once it's full. So it won't craft any sugar, but once it fills up, it'll craft the paper, which will then get distributed into that chest down into this one here. Now we just need to configure this to accept both the gunpowder and the paper and do the same setup we had uh, as a demonstration over there to then craft all the beautiful rockets. And there we go, it should all be set up now and working. Let's double check here. So we got both the gunpowder and the paper. The paper's actually already full. That sugar cane farm is small, but very efficient. And let's uh, stick some of this gunpowder in here now. First, let's fill that off there. Then I just put some gunpowder in here and we should see. I didn't have a comparator set to subtraction. There it goes. Crafting away the rockets, just like that. It's spinning them out so crazily. Oh, it's great. Now we have the problem of uh, lots of rockets uh, piling on the ground here. We need somewhere to store them as well, because uh, just having them do spawn is not going to be good at all. And would you look at that? It's all done and dusted. So our rockets are going to spit out and look all fancy like and then end up in those uh, hoppers there. So if we load the system up with some uh, gunpowder here, you can see it. it'll just work its way through the, all that. I love the animation, the movement of the rockets just uh, firing off. It's just it's just so fun. Those eventually will make their way over to this little elevator that I have set up here. It is very quiet, as you can hear. There is no droppers making a ton of noise, which is good. And those just load up into this shulker box loader here. So once this shulker box gets fully loaded up like that, it pops off, ends up in this chest down here, and puts in a new shulker box ready to be filled. And it'll just start cranking away and we'll have rockets we can take from here if we need them or a full shulker of rockets down here as well. Very, very fancy little compact design here, making use of the new copper bulb. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. However, we do have a very important issue to get to. This place, this is a bunch of shulker monsters and uh, exposed redstone and grass. It's not looking good down here. We're going to transform this entire area to make it look very nice and gloomy to match the vibe of the Yin district. So let's hop into a time lapse. And while that time lapse is happening, let's dive deep into the story behind this section of the Yin district. In the heart of the Yin district, where shadows danced in the flickering light, stood an ancient nuclear reactor, its hum a consistent echo in the depths. Yet, unlike its original purpose, this reactor served a clandestine role, fueling not only the energy needed of Shin Mirai, but also the sinister machinations of a covert factory nestled within its confines. This factory, shrouded in secrecy and whispers, churned out illegal explosives coveted commodities of the underground world. Only the most daring ventured into the black markets of the Yin district to procure these deadly wares, for they held the promise of power and profit beyond measure. Rumors swirled like mist through the streets, whispers of a connection between these illicit explosives and the very arms wielded by law enforcers. Some speculated that the guns of justice themselves were forged in the belly of this forbidden factory. Yet, to such accusations, the noble police of Shin Mirai turned a blind eye. Their denials as steadfast as the stone walls of the reactor itself. We're coming along pretty nice down here in the Yin district. Big old nuclear reactor looking quite nice. The tinted glass is so, so nice. I just love the block. It is very expensive, but uh, it's so worth it in this scenario. We still have so, so much more work to do here. And so I think I'm going to start up a live stream over on twitch.tv slash starfish 5 legend and we're going to bang out the rest of this with the audience there. Here are some of the better clips for that live stream. All right, so if we kind of mark out this path that comes along here. So let's grab all these goodies. Now we just kind of have fun uh, throwing them around. Exposed copper. 
Expose it. How to expose copper. You uh, dig up all of its dirty secrets. Yeah, they, they just add just a little bit of light. Oh, so good. So good. We turn on some shaders. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Oh, it is fancy. This here. Okay. That looks pretty cool. We then make that invisible. And then we go trigger set to uh, set two. Now it's fixed. And we go boop. <laughs> yes, it works. That's great. We had some good fun over on that ice stream. We got a decent amount done, but there's still so much more to do here. But we have this nuclear reactor in, and it is looking so mighty fine. All the technical bits. We did get some screen action going on here, too. A button that uh, no one should ever press. Don't press this button. Who knows what it does? We shall never find out. Never. Someone's probably going to press the button. We also changed the grass down here to a proper path, as well as uh, switch out most of it for mycelium, because uh, grass just doesn't match the vibe of the in district funny enough. But now I really want to do something about these walls and that ceiling there, as uh, we need to kind of block some of it off and finish this concrete all around and convert it a little bit to something like this, but have the deep slate here mixing up into the mud, then the basalt, and then coal blocks, then to finally be the concrete. A nice little gradient that kind of matches more of a old kind of cavernous mine that the Yin District used to be. To start, we're gonna transform all this ceiling to black concrete. Hell, we see a wild starfish decorating a ceiling with a black concrete. It looks very dark, yes, dark indeed. Wow, he is very quick. The ceiling has now been voidified. I just love the effect that the black concrete makes. It's so spooky. So now we got our deep slate, mud, black stone, then coal blocks to make nice cavern walls. When it comes to terraforming, I generally don't think about stuff too much and just kind of go with the flow, if you will. If you try too hard uh, making things look organic, most of the time uh, they end up not looking organic. To start here with as well, I'm just gonna do the whole thing in deep slate just to get the shape down right. And then I'll come in afterwards and add in the texturing and that sweet, sweet gradient. Then after I kind of just place some blocks down, I take a step back and kind of look at it and make sure it's looking all right. There's certain things that I don't like, like this block here looks like a little strange. I then go in afterwards and adjust it as needed. See, that's better now. So I kind of just do that across the entire thing here. And it's already starting to look much more gloomy now with these walls in. I'm just using some glow liking currently for some of the lighting just to keep the mobs from spawning. I don't want creepers sneaking up on me. Now I'm going to go through and texture it all and blend it all together. The gradients have now been finished. And oh man, I just love the way that they look. I'm blending the deep slate down here into the void of a ceiling there. It really just adds so much atmosphere to this area. Now the last thing I would like to do today is finish up covering up some of this redstone here and adding in some nice pipes and whatnot to really turn this into more of a factory looking like build. Well, I got a little carried away. <laughs> There's lots of the pipes and whatnot now here, but it really does bring in the factory feel in my opinion. The little water drips from these waterlogged grates are so nice. I love that new addition. And since it is the explosive factory, it is a little dangerous decorating with TNT, but I think it's worth it. I really wanted everything to just feel very technical. This thing produces. While we've been working here, it's popped out four shulker boxes of rockets. But man, this place has transformed so much in the last few hours here. I really just want to go back and do a before and after because the difference is very, very stark. So here is the before, and as you can see, there's so much empty space that we filled. It's just so barren in here. It's kind of crazy that this is the same spot that we just did. And now, the after. It's fully done. The cavern walls looking so nice. The factory with all its pipes and technicality. Oh my goodness, it's great. 
But that is going to do it for today's episode of the Shin Murai Project. Thank you all so, so much for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, you truly are a legend indeed. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, night, time zone, whatever it is for you. This has been Starfish 5 Legend, signing off.